Hey everybody, this is Suze from Revelation Quilts. Today's tutorial is on this awesome scrappy strip quilt. And I'm going to teach you how to make it. If you've made quilts before, then I know that you have scraps. So this is an awesome way to use up your scraps and your strips. And we're also going to learn how to make this piano key border that you see around the edge of the main quilt. So let's get going and cue the music. Given all of these squares by somebody who uh, gave up quilting so they're just they're like six inch muslin squares but they're really old so they're all ratty and stuff at the end so I also have uh, all of these strings these are one inch strings and I've got tons of them and I also have a container of two inch strings just from scraps from the quilts I've made. So I've decided to do a string quilt and I'm going to show you how to do that. So it's really easy but first I'm gonna since these are all kind of irregular shapes I've decided that I'm going to cut them down to five and a half inches and these are going to be our foundation pieces. So I'm just going to cut them down. Let's see, I'll move this up so we can see. Cut them down to five and a half inches. Just to get rid of the stringy ends. You want to work with a nice fresh piece so that when I um, when the string block is done, it'll end up being five inches total. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we are going to mark one inches in opposite corners. So I'm just going to take and just put a little pencil mark right at the one inch on both sides. One inch. So you can see my mark here and my mark here. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite corner. So I'm just going to spin it around and I'm going to measure one inch from the corner on both the top and the side. A little pencil mark. And this will be covered up so you won't have to worry about it too much. Okay, so I've got a mark here and here. And then on the opposite side, I've got a mark here and here. So I am going to use my one inch strips and my two inch strips and I'm going to alternate them. So um, you'll see what I mean. But if you're going to do this, you can certainly use anything you want. So I'm going to start with a, a one inch strip and I'm just going to iron it so it's nice and flat. And then I am going to lay this there's one mark there and there's another mark there. So I'm going to lay this so it's right side down and I'm going to line up the edge, one edge with this strip and one edge, I'm sorry, one edge lines up with this mark and the other edge lines up with this mark. And I'm just going to sew right down here and then after it's sewn it will flip over to the side like this. So let's go sew this down. And then I will show you what it looks like after I'm done. So here we are at the sewing machine and I've got my, my muslin square and my strip. And again, this is lined up with the one mark here, right on the edge like that. And I'm going to line it up with the other mark down towards the bottom. And I'm just going to sew along the edge quarter inch seam allowance. Find my foot pedal. Okay. And I'm just going to hold it right at that mark so it's nice and straight. And I'm just going to sew it until it hits the edge of the foundation piece. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess 
and I can use that scrap for something else. And then we're going to, um, I'm going to finger press it back like this. So that is what it's going to look like. And I'm going to take it back over to the ironing board and I'm going to iron it. Okay, so we're at the ironing board and I'm just going to set the seam first and then I'm going to iron it back. So that is what your first strip should look like. So you still got your corners here and your first strip is there. And then I'm going to alternate and then I'm going to choose a two inch strip. And I just want the two inch strip to have some good contrast. So here's a nice yellow. And I'm just going to iron it flat because all my strips are kind of wrinkled. I'm going to iron it flat. And then I'm going to put this right side down. And I don't have to do it all up at the top because the, the angle is shorter. So I'm just going to start it about right here. And I'm just going to sew right along that line there. And I'll be right back after I do that. So I've sewn that down. And I am going to cut off the excess. And I'll be able to put that back in my pile and use that again. And I'm just going to set that seam and I'm going to pull it back like so. So now I have two strips that are down. So there's the first one we did. Here are the corners and there's the second one. So as long as I'm here at the ironing board, I'm going to pick the next strip. And I've just got good contrast to that one. I'm just going to iron it so it's nice and flat. And I'm going to take this and I'm just going to add this to here. And I'm going to sew right along here and then bend that back like that. And so I'm just alternating between the two inch and the one inch strips. So let me go sew that and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've sewn that down right sides together. And I'm just going to cut off the excess whoops, and put that back in my scrap pile. And now I can iron that back like so. And I just have a little bit of the corner here that I need to cover. So I'm going to pick another strip and I'll pick this one, but I'm going to cut it because I don't need very much at all. Iron it a shiny one. It's nice and flat and I'm just going to lay this right on here like this. So along there because all I need to do is cover that corner and that will do it. So let me go do that. Okay, here we go. So I've sewn that one on. There's quite a bit of hangover there. Hangover. Huh? So and then I'm just going to cut that off. I can use that for something else. And I'm going to iron that. Pull that back like so. This is a great way to use your scrap. So half of this has been sewn on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to choose another one inch strip. And let's see, what do I want to do? I think I will go with this black one. I'm just going to iron it so it's flat. And I've still got my mark here and my mark here. So I am going to put this right side down so that the right side of the strip is hitting that mark on the top and on the bottom. I'm going to sew right along the outside towards that corner. So I'll go sew that. Okay, so I've sewn that down and I'm going to cut off the excess. And then that will get put over towards that corner. I'm going to iron it down so it's nice and flat. The smaller strips don't want to iron as nicely. And it's time to pick a two inch strip. Let's do something bright and colorful like this bright gold. It's nice to set up a little nest where you're working because then you can just grab strips, iron them, take them over to the sewing machine. I'm going to put it right side down right along this edge of this one and I'm going to sew that down like that 
Here we are. And trimming. Ironing back. So as you can start to see, we're going to end up with a white stripe right down the middle. And that's exactly what we want. Let's go to the next thing. Let's see. Here's a green. And we'll just lay this one inch strip right along there. Sew that down. And trim that off. Iron it back. And I only need one more, one more two inch strip to cover that last corner right here. So let's see, let's find something with a good contrast, a light color. Here's a crazy green. And I only need a little bit of it, like this much. So I'm just going to trim it right now. Lay that right side down just to cover that corner. Okay, so that is down, and we're just going to iron that back. So let's take a look and see what we have got now. So there is, that's kind of what it's going to look like. It's just going to look like these random strips. Of course, there's the white, that's the original muslin square. So when we turn it over, this is what it's going to look like. So you're going to have all of these seams on the back of your muslin square. There's the front and there's the back. So when we trim this, it's actually quite easy because all we have to do is use this kind of as our template. So this seam that goes right along here, we can put our ruler along there. Now the square was five and a half inches. Now, because we've sewn on it, we've kind of distorted it a little bit and shrunk it a little bit. So if I go to measure five and a half, it's going to be a little short and distorted just because of the, the stitching and things like that. So I am going to shorten it. I'm going to square it up to five inches now. So I'm just going to take my five inch mark and do it right along the edge of the square. And I'm just going to trim five inches. Take away the excess, excess, and then I turn it over and do the same thing here. Cut off all the extra strips. So now when we turn it over, this is the block that we have. Oh, there's a little thread there. Okay, so that's the block that we have. And so when we add those to other existing blocks, we can make designs out of this so that we can put them together like this, make X's, and that white stripe will just stand out really nicely. We can add more. Like so. Whoops. There we go. So there's all kinds of ways that you can uh, arrange these. But because I've done skinny, or the one inch, the two inch, the one inch, the two inch, these are all going to line up and make these larger connections here. So now when you make these, you do not have to, there's a couple variations you can do. So you do not have to alternate your sizes. You can do random size strips on all of these. You can, instead of starting off a one inches, you can just start off with one strip. Let me find a strip here. You could just start off with one strip and just put it right in the middle and then sew strips along the edge. You could also use uh, any square. You could do black, you could do red, you could do white. There's so many variations to this. But I like the white to show because it really just ends up as an accent piece. The other nice thing that, that I've seen done that you can do is doing it just like this, but the first two strips you do in black. 
So that really accents that white middle with the black borders and then the colors beyond there. So that just adds to your design even more. So let's do a bunch more of these and then we'll show you all the variations that you can do with them. So here's a bunch of different layouts I tried and they're all super interesting and they all give their own effect. I really liked it. But ultimately I really decided on this one because I like this one the best. All of the points matched up the best in this one and I think for the overall effect that I want this is the one that's going to work for me. But you are welcome to do whatever tickles your fancy. They all look really good. So I've decided how I'm going to put my quilt together and now I'm going to put the rows together. So I grabbed one whole row and I'm just going to sew them together. Now remember when you sew your rows together, um, you want all of your seam allowances on one row to go to the right. And then on the next row, you're going to have them go to the left so that when you sew your rows together, you can nest those seams together and it'll, it'll go together much nicer. So let's, uh, let's get this sewn together. Now I'm going to match up these seams along here and I find that it's easiest to match up these right along here. So when I put them right sides together, I'm going to look at this first seam and match it up with this first seam. And then your where your white is, that is going to match up really nicely. So I've got that matched up. I think, let me just make sure, there we go. And I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam right down the side. Make sure, like these corners like to flip up, so make sure that you hold those down. And like I said, I'm just going to make that seam allowance go to the right and I'm going to press down a little harder than normal because there's actually two layers of fabric here because we used our foundation. So um, and even when you iron your row after it's all done you're going to have to maybe put that iron on just a tad longer just because um, it is two layers of fabric so it's a little more bulky than if I were just sewing two single pieces of fabric together. And so I'm just going to keep building on to the left and I'm going to match where this seam is here, this where the white meets the first strip. 
so I'm just going to make sure those are right on top of each other and then line up the sides and just go right down the line. here that I've sewn together and what I'm going to do I've got the seam allowance of one row all going to the right and the next row is all going to the left so I am going to I'm going to pin these together so that they'll be nice and straight and I'm just going to pin right on the seam it's a lot of fabric to pin through but it'll be worth it to pin them because it'll be nice and straight and I'm just going to pin where the seam allowances are and then when I sew them together they'll be nice and straight which is exactly what I want but I am going through four layers of fabric most of the time not always So let me just get this pinned. This is one of the first lessons I learned with quilting was how to nest my seams. And um, I think it's really important because especially with a scrappy uh, string quilt like this where you've got the foundation piece, um, it's just can get pretty bulky and um, it's nice to um, nest those seams to kind of reduce the bulk a little otherwise you'll have a seam with eight layers of fabric which you really don't want so I've got it all pinned and I am just gonna go right down and sew this together at a quarter inch here we go. go we've got our first two rows sewn together and um, I like to take them to the ironing board as I go it doesn't really matter which direction you press this seam allowance because um, I'm just gonna press them all away from myself and that is the first row I'm really happy with how this looks. So let's sew all the rows together. And then we are going to, um, I'm going to do a special border on this. And I'm going to uh, 
show you how to do it so that you can do one too. It'll be fun. Okay. Here I've got all my rows sewn together. This is the body of the quilt. I love it. Like I think it turned out so cute and I especially like how you know where the white part is like how each square is bordered by that thin strip of fabric. I just feel like that really stands out. So I love it. So let's get some borders put on. The first border I'm going to put on all around the edge is just a white border. So let me get that cut and we'll sew that on and see what it looks like. I think I'm just going to do like a two and a half inch border so that when it gets all sewn on, it'll show up as a two inch. So let's get that going. So first I'm just going to square up my edge so that I have a straight cut to start with. Why isn't it working very well? Let's see, did it cut through? Almost, almost got it to the edge. It might be almost time to change my blade. So I'm going to go two and a half inches. And again, I like to hold my ruler down with a weight. I got that um, tidbit from Donna Jordan. So that's a brilliant idea. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I was cutting four layers, so that should be enough for the sides. Let me see if it's enough for the top and bottom. It is. It is enough. So I'm going to iron these because they got some wrinkles in them. So um, it's a good idea to iron your fabric before you cut it. See that wrinkle? So... That was my bad. So I'm going to iron these and um, and then I'm going to cut two more. See how bad that wrinkle is. I guess it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to cut two more. So we need one, two for the top and bottom and two for the sides. So two and a half inches. Okay, let me iron these and then we'll get these borders sewn on. It'll be perfect. So now I've got my first white border around the edge. I think it frames it up very nicely. But uh, we're going to add a unique border around that border. And it's called a piano keys border. And you might be familiar with what it is, but um, I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So let's take a look. It's super easy and it's another way to use up all of those scraps that you have. So let's get started. So to get started on our piano keys quilt, I'm going to alternate between my two inch strips and my one inch strips like I did before. So I'm just going to grab a two inch strip. I don't need it to be this long. So I'm going to cut it um, about in half. And just iron it nice and flat. And I'm just going to start sewing random strips together. But I'm going to iron them first just so they're not bunched up and wrinkled. And they don't have to match in length at all. So I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam right down. Make sure I got enough bobbin thread. I probably do for this. Okay, so I'm just going to sew a quarter inch right down the strip. Make sure it's all lined up. And I won that bobbin race. Okay, and I'm just going to iron it. 
the seam to one side and I'm going to change my bobbin and do the next strip. Okay, then I'm going to grab another one and I'm just making sure that there's good contrast between each one. And like I said, they don't have to be the same length at all because we're going to end up cutting them up. And just make sure I got my front and back right. So right sides together. And just sew a bunch of these together. Making sure that they are lined up nicely. And then I'm, I like to iron as I go just to keep them nice and smooth. And pick a skinny one. cut off these long ends and use them for the next one just you know if it gets to be too long for you all right let's see how about this nice red It's about 13 inches long so now I'm going to do the exact same thing with different fabrics so that I'll have two or three of them exactly alike so that when we're gonna make one big long strip with these and we're gonna sew them together so go ahead and make one or two or even three more how it just depends on how much variety you want So here I've got a few that I have made. So I am going to cut these to two and a half inches wide. And this is a more narrow strip that I have on this one. So I'll probably only get one strip out of it. So let's see, one, two and a half. Just make sure I have clearance on both sides. And I'm just gonna cut right down that strip. And I'm going to turn it over, line it up to the um, lines on my cutting mat. Oops, sorry, I hit the camera. And then two and a half inches straight down. There we go. So there's one that's done, and I'm going to do the same thing to the next one and I uh, will get be able to get more out of this one. I just want to straighten this edge first. So I'm starting from a nice straight edge all the way down. And I like to line up the seam lines with a line on my ruler so that I know it will be straight. And 
And then I'm going to get as many two and a half inch strips out of this that I can. So I'm just going to cut again. There's another strip. And I can definitely get another one out of this. So let's line up the two and a half inch. One, two and a half. Let's see if I can get another one. I don't think I can. I'm not going to make it. So I'll put that to the other side. Here's the third one that I made. I'm going to square up the edge first so that I'm starting from a nice straight edge every time that I cut. So I'm just cutting the uneven edges off like this. Turn it over and line up my two and a half inches. And I'm just going to make a bunch of strips like this until I have enough to go the length of my quilt. And so I do the long edges. I put them on the long edges of the quilt first. Oh, that looks longer than two and a half. Let me make sure I got that measurements right. I accidentally cut it three inches, so I'll just cut that down. And I'll bet that maybe I can get one more out of this. Let's see. One, two and a half. Oh, just made it. That's awesome. So then you'll just mix these strips up. You can turn them around so that they are they're different. I'm just going to sew them together like this until I have a long enough strip to cover the one side or one side of the length of my quilt. So my quilt is 45 inches long right now. So I just need enough to make a 45 incher. So I'm going to sew these three together and let's see where that brings me so let me go do that so here I've got the edge of my quilt and I've got my big long strip of piano keys and so it's just going to get added to that white border just like that so I'm just going to start on the edge and then put right sides together like so and just sew that border on right along like that and I'm going to do the two long sides of the quilt first, and then I'll do the short sides. So this is the strip is longer than the edge of my quilt, so I'll just cut that off at the end, and I'll show you. So I've sewn this border on uh, to the long side of the quilt, starting at the beginning all the way down. And there is the little, the extra, the little tail. So I'm just going to put in my, my ruler and just cut that off so it's even with the side of the quilt. There you go. And now I can use this, this that I cut off. I can just add it to the next strip to go along the bottom of the quilt. So just do that until your piano key border is all the way around the quilt. And then we'll add another plain border like this just to so that this will stand out so here's the final quilt it ended up being 62 long by 52 wide and you can see the first white border around the main part of the quilt and then the piano key border that we made then i added another white two and a half inch border and then around the edge i added a five inch border and I was lucky enough to find some fabric that just really incorporated a ton of colors that would tie everything in together and together. So I'm going to pan down a little bit and you can see how big the quilt is. 
It ended up being a large lap size quilt. Um, it's probably, well, it might be long enough for a twin. 62 by 52 again. I really like the way it turned out. And the nice thing about these string quilts is that you can change the size of the um, strips uh, to be whatever you want. And so it kind of gave mine a little bit of a 3D effect in the middle squares. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I hope that you get to make one for yourself. And like I said, it's a great way to use up scraps. So if you like what you see and you want to give it a shot, please like this video and subscribe and comment below on what you think of it and how you decided to do your string quilt. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. And that's a wrap for this video. Happy quilting! Mm -hmm.